the first the first girl, right? He was <laughs> she was throwing the, the the singles on her, right? But like the way he was putting the singles on her, like the singles was like touching her. And she like, hey, um, hey, stop putting that dirty ass money on my. But she said it in a nice way, right? But then he kept on doing it. So then, <laughs> so then she said something again, and then he just stopped. He stopped throwing the money. So she looking like, why you stop? He was like, it sound like you got an attitude. Don't be no set. That best thing ain't for the head. Y'all rats up cheese. Bring it. Don't get down for the bread. Yeah. Let him sleep. Yeah. Let him sleep. Yeah. Call the plug. Cotton some bar for the week. Who's, who's smoking that trash? We smoking that gas. Nah. You know, when you go to them clubs, it be like, all they do is smoke. Like, yeah. And it was three of us in the car, too. So shit. Oh, you, you dropped them? Yeah. Oh, you know, the bachelor whip? You said I had to bring out the bachelor whip? Oh, yeah, perpetrating the fraud. Oh, shut up. You're not even You're stupid. <laughs> Damn, it do something crazy as hell in here. Oh, man. My people. Hold on. Is this too bright on my face? It might be a little too bright on my face. What's going on, my people? <clears throat> I want to say I have a story time today. So, this month is my birthday. Libra gang, Libra gang, you feel me? I decided to go out yesterday with two of my friends. You know, uh, one of the other ones, he celebrated his birthday too. Shout out to my boy, Tim. I ain't gonna lie, I'm gonna keep it 100. I wanted to go to this like bowling alley or like, it's like an adult gaming spot. I wanted to do that because to be honest, I didn't really feel like being around people. I realized as you get older, you don't really feel like being around people like that. Hey, big guy. Go back inside. Well, go play. Go play. Let me finish telling the story, and then I'll, I'll talk to you, okay? Mm, bye go bye. play. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. No. Bye-bye. No. Come on, big guy. Let me tell my story. No, I'm going to tell your story. I got to tell my story. No, I'm going to tell your story. Come on, let me tell my story. Can I tell my story? No. Go, go inside. Seriously. Go, go with mommy. You. Look, mommy calling you. Mommy calling you. Mommy calling you. Mommy's calling you. Go. This man. She, mommy is calling you. Look, mommy is in there calling you. I think she want to give you something to eat. She want to give you some chocolate. Go get the chocolate. Go get the chocolate for mommy. Yeah, his ass gonna go get some chocolate now. <laughs> Alright, so, like I was saying, I didn't want to go to no, um, I didn't want to go to no club or nothing like that, because I just didn't feel like being around people, but, you know, they ended up wanting to go to, to the club, so we died, we decided to go to the spot that we usually go to like me and my boy brandon always go to the spot it's called mirza and like we know the dj shout out to dj flux man flux has always been looking out for us since we was like coming up doing music so we decided to go to mirza and just the atmosphere was way different from what we remembered but what really threw things off was the bouncers at mirza and them, them dudes was mad confrontational. Like, I have this thing against bouncers that are really confrontational because, like, I just feel as though they antagonize people just so they could, like, get into altercations with them. I don't know how many of y'all had that experience, but I have a thing against bouncers. Not all of them, but, you know, it's one of them situations where, you, to, for me, it's like you guilty until proven innocent. You feel me? So... Un until you show me that you like a a nice guy or whatever, like I just kind of I don't say hi, I don't say nothing to you. you just uh, search me and I'm gonna stay out your way. But being a bouncer is kind of a dangerous job. I'm not gonna say like I'm not gonna act like it's not. But at the same time, I do feel as though it's certain bouncers that like use that shit as an excuse to antagonize people just because they know that, you know, we could literally beat your ass and throw you out the club and not, you know, not get arrested for it. And we all going to jump on you type shit. So, you feel me? So, when we was at Mirza, 
like it had this one incident where Brandon was trying to see how much it cost to get a section. Cause the way Merza is now, like you have to, it's like you have to get a section. If you standing up, it's just uncomfortable. And for me, I don't like going to the club and standing up. Like I rather just get a section. And that was the plan to get a section. So we, he was trying to talk to one of the waitresses, and she was kind of like at the end of the counter. And the bouncer was on some like, yo, nah, you can't be it. Like he literally was pushing up on B. And we looking like, yo, I ain't gonna lie. This shit hit the fan, bro. I'm just gonna have to shoot this nigga. Cause he was, I ain't gonna lie, he was big. He was, he was big, bro. Folk had to be about six, eight. You feel me? He just a solid dude. And he just, just basically pushing Brandon out the way. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, bro, it's not called for. Like he's literally, like, he's literally trying to figure out a way to spend some money. Like, by you doing that, you just cost the club probably $500 because we was, we was down to buy a section and buy some bottles and stuff like that. So, after that, that shit just kind of threw niggas off. I had a I already had a Long Island iced tea. I drank the Long Island, and I was like, yo, we can go. So, we decided to go to another club, um, Pink Pony. I have never, it's a strip club. I've never been to Pink Pony before. I've heard about Pink Pony. So that was my first time going. And I'm not going to lie. Pink Pony, was, it was cool. Like, it wasn't ratchet. It was a little more, um, ups, I would say, upscale, you know? The girls were slim. There's some slim things in there, you feel me? Some of them girls look like uh, <laughs> GTA strippers. Like, they was literally dancing like Grand Theft Auto strippers. <laughs> but, but... So, we're in there, we got drinks again, right? And this time, I was trying to get a section. I was gonna get a section this time. So, I was talking to the lady behind the bar about getting a section. And like, I don't know, bro. Like, I'm gonna keep it real with you. When you go to these type of clubs, that's how they make their money. So, if they feel as though you are not gonna spend no money, they judge you. So I don't know if she felt as though we wasn't gonna spend no money or I wasn't gonna spend no money. So she just had a um she just like her attitude was just kinda off. You know what I'm saying? It was off. So she 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 said, listen, it's a first come, first serve basis. So you can sit there, but if somebody buys a bottle, then you have to get up. I'm be like, okay. So I'm like, shit, how much is a bottle? And she started talking about two, three hundred dollars. And I'm like, I was seriously contemplating it. And actually, I was more leaning on doing it because I just didn't want to, like, just stand up. I hate going to the club and standing up, like I said before. But then, like, her demeanor kind of changed and that shit, shit threw me off. I'm like, I'm not giving you two, three, I'm not giving you $200 if your customer service is, like, trash to me. You feel me? If you treat if you treat me like shit, I'm not giving you no money out my pocket. And I felt as though her customer service started going down, you know. And that I was like, nah, we we just figure it out. So we stood there for a little bit, and finally, like we saw a little section open up. We went, we sat down. <sighs> now <laughs> we sat down next to these two Hispanic dudes, bro. And I swear to God, one of them niggas looked like a dyke. He looked like I don't even know if they go by dyke. He looked like a lesbian. Like he he looked like a lesbian. Like at first we thought it was a, a girl dressed like a dude. But like it was a dude. You feel me? I think it was three of them. One was from Colombia, one was from Venezuela, and I think the other one was from Colombia as well. I think the other one was from Colombia as well. But bro. Them three, you could tell them three niggas ain't never had no pussy in their life. Because the way they was acting, I'm like, oh, nah. These niggas don't get no, they don't get no type of play, bro. But, you know, they was cool. So, we was just in there carrying a the conversation with them. Plus, they let us sit down in their section. And, like, they, I, don't, I don't know if they had money or they didn't have money. But we ended up bringing some of the girls over there. So, we bought... Two of the baddest females in there, right? To our section. And this nigga Brandon fucked it up. 
<laughs> this nigga Brandon fucked it up. Like, I mean, look, we all married, so it ain't like we out there trying to, you know, trying to take anything down or nothing like that. But this nigga Brandon was saying some off the wall shit to these females to the point where I'm like, nigga, it sound like you you judging them, bro. Like, just, just look, just get the dance, give up your singles, and don't say nothing. You can say, how's your day going, or something like that. Carry, like, brief conversation. Because at the end of the day, bro, when you talk to a stripper, she don't, she don't care. She don't give a damn about what you got going on. She don't care. She's literally trying to get that bag. So she going to make you feel good. She going to, you know, she going to create that fantasy, fantasy for you. As long as you're throwing them dollars out. So, I can't even say what he was telling. I don't even really remember very verbatim what he was saying to these girls, bro. But I know he was like, look, you violated. Oh, that's what he was doing. This the first the first girl, right? He was <laughs> he was throwing the, the, the singles on her, right? But, like, the way he was putting the singles on her, like, the singles was, like, touching her pussy. And she like, hey, um, hey. Stop putting that dirty ass money on my pussy. But she said it in a nice way. Right? But then he kept on doing it. So then <laughs> So then she said something again. And then he just stopped. He stopped throwing the money. So she looking like, why you stop? He was like, it sound like you got an attitude. <laughs> he said it sound like you got an attitude. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is a wild, bro. So I had I had money in my pocket, so I took the money out and like I started like throwing it on just to just to not make it seem awkward. But I'm like, yo, bro, like she's telling you a valid, she's giving you a valid reason. Like money is dirty, money go through a lot of hands. Don't stop putting the money on her pussy. He wasn't trying to hear that. So then she got her money. She put it in a pail. And then she left. They had like a little back and forth. And then she left. And then another chick came by. And she was gorgeous. She was gorgeous. Bro, I'm not. She was like Hispanic too. I think she was like Dominican. She was gorgeous. I don't know what he said to her, man. That shit went left too. And I remember before she leaving, she was like, yo, just because I work here, don't judge me. Like. And I was like, oh, nigga, you, you wildin'. Because me, I don't personally be liking getting danced from strippers. When I go to a strip club, I literally just go for the food. And that be it. Like, I'm going to eat my, my sandwich and I'm going to chill. I ain't, I don't, don't lick at me. Don't don't put your nasty pussy in my face. I don't just let me eat my food in peace. But with her, I was, I was going to get a dance from her. I would have literally got a dance from her. And then, like, he messed that up. She didn't even come back over there. You feel me? The whole night, I was like, oh, where's she at? She was, she, it was some guy, and I think he was famous, too, because he was, she was on him the whole night. He had, it was a white guy, he had, like, he had on a hoodie, but he didn't look like, you know, he didn't look like he had money, but you could probably, you could tell, bro. When you go to the strip club, it's a, it'd be two things. It'd be dudes that don't have no money, and, you know, they just, yo, I'm just in here for the, for the experience. It be dudes that don't have no money and they act like they do. And it be dudes that actually have money. And you could tell the niggas that actually have money. Like the confidence that exudes from them is like I can buy every bitch in here. And that's that's the type of confidence I got from from homie. So anyway, the that club, that strip club ended up closing at two o'clock. And we didn't want to go home, so we ended up going to pinups. Now I've heard stories about pinups when one of my uh, one of my coworkers used to work there. It's an old head, old Ethiopian dude, right? I ain't gonna call his name because he used to do some things. But this old Ethiopian dude, bro, he used to get his check. He made money doing other stuff, but he had a specific amount of money put to the side just for strippers. And he used to pay for. I heard he used to run through. Now I don't know if some of them girls still work there. But I heard he used to run through a lot of strippers that worked at pinups. Like he'll go in there, he he he'll run his game smooth. He'll go in there, he'll give him a little bread or whatever, and then you know 
he would um he would pay him some extra and and you know he would take him to a hotel so i've definitely heard i've heard stories about you know about pinups but anyway pinups was more it was more ratchet like the women in there had their butts were bigger you know and they were more aggressive that's the one thing i could tell you about like somewhat hood strip clubs they be more aggressive like you feel me they walk around looking for looking for that bag i mean at pink pony they were too but they weren't as aggressive as, as they were at pinups like we were sitting there drinking by the bar strippers would walk by look at us just get to dancing right in front of us i'm saying at the end of the day you either not going to throw no money or you going to throw some money like they they literally force you to throw the money they force you to throw that money man so that was cool we stayed there for a little while um i don't know i think for the night i probably spent like 200 dollars, and i'm trying to figure out where it went because i know brandon spent some money and tim spent some money too but i'm still trying to figure out like where the hell they all I, it didn't seem like i spent that much money but i'm looking at my account now and i'm like i i spent like 200 dollars. i know i brandon paid for us to get in at two of them spots and then i bought drinks twice tim bought drinks twice and i'm still L O. we pay for parking I don't know, bro. I don't know where the money went. But yeah, it was it was an interesting night. It was an interesting night, man. But the, the whole thing got me thinking, right? This shit got me thinking, like, bro. When you go to the strip club, you cannot judge strippers, bro. Because I don't know if I said I said this in a previous video, but I remember when I used to work at the mall, it was this chick that worked at one of the stores that was a stripper. And she had a lot of money. She had a lot of money. But the crazy thing is I saw her a few years later and they don't look like she was doing as good as she was when, when we worked at the mall together. But I remember that. I remember like this was around 2010, 2011. Our, that was when the Camaros at first really like came back. Shorty bought herself and her boyfriend at the time a Camaro. Like they both had matching Camaros. You feel me? All the designer shit, all of that, bro. She had all of that. And then, like, the last time I seen her, this was when me and my wife lived in the city. Well, we wasn't married yet, but we lived in the city. I went to JR Crickets, and she was, I seen her. And she, I mean, you know, <laughs> you know when people get older, that body, that body ain't the same. So that body, you know, you could tell she had the fluffy back then, but that body just wasn't, it wasn't hitting the same. And yeah, bro, it doesn't look like she was doing that good. I'm gonna keep it a hundred. I'm gonna keep it a hundred. Um, or matter of fact, I'm not gonna say that. She, she looked like she was living a regular life, and. It wasn't, it wasn't how I remember her. From when I remember her, she, she wasn't living no regular life. But yeah, that's the story. That was how I spent my birthday. And I'm, the one thing I'm gonna say, this is how I'm gonna end the video. I, the one thing I hate about going to the strip club and going to the clubs period is that after you leave, you smell like smoke. So my like my wife I don't know if y'all heard my wife when she came in here, but like the car smelled like cigarette smoking weed. And I didn't smoke not a damn thing. It's just like just from being in there, all that smoke just got on my clothes. That's the one thing I hate about going to the club. But I will say this, man. I feel as though I'm too old for the club. I'm too old for the strip club. I'm too old for all of that. But maybe it's because I'm not rich. So I can't really have the have as much fun. And I don't know. Them girls, was, there were some attractive women in there. But they wasn't really doing it for me. Like, I feel as though if my wife won, if my wife was a stripper, like, she would make a lot of money. I think my wife is a bad bitch. So, like, I was in there and I was like, hey, what I look like giving you my money? When the woman I got in the house look better than you. 
Interest doesn't make what, what what are you gonna do for me? You feel me? What are you gonna do for me? It's not it's not it's not giving it's not giving what it's supposed to give. You know what I'm saying? That you throwing your ass and doing all that, it's not giving what it's supposed to give for me. I don't know. Maybe that's broke nigga mentality. Maybe you know I'm not a I'm not a hundred thousand here. I'm not a millionaire. Maybe millionaires and hundred thousand is feel differently. But I don't. I just me throwing money at a strip is not a good investment for me. Maybe I don't know. What y'all think? All right, man. That's the video. I just wanted to come on here and record something and, and you know show my face. Squad.